Hi there and Shalom. I'm Doreen Ellen Bell Dutton in Spot. And uh, as you can hear, thank God there's peace reigns in, in, in Spot. Thank God. May it rain everywhere. There has been a very extreme increase in the expression of anti-Semitism uh, since the outbreak of the war with Hamas. And I should like to address the, the issue of anti-Semitism that from which it stems and uh, offer suggestions about how we might heal from it. If, God forbid, a child is born with some sort of deformity or illness, some life-changing defect, as a result of their mother's recklessness and they know that had she comported herself wisely this would not have happened to him or her that child is going to be furious the Gentiles know that we Jews are responsible for everything. They know that. There's no sense denying it. They think that we are responsible for everything that happens in the world as a result of economic control or political in and or, and I guess, political intrigue um, and there are certainly Jews who are not adept enough at Torah that they have to resort to such um, low-level means of controlling things. But uh, those who learn Torah uh, are controlling the world and everything in it, everything that's happening in it, as a result of their learning, even though most of us do not know that that is the case. We think that we're building ourselves. We don't realize the full effects of what our learning is. As I've been saying for many years with God's help, one of the Hebrew words for learning is lomed. It is an anagram of molad, which means giving birth to, engendering. That's actually the male. Engendering. So when we learn, we engender. Another word for learning, meditative learning, in Hebrew is higui. And we can hear clearly that the same letters in higui and in hagoi, meaning a people, are one and the same matter of, of, of different punctuation, but it's exactly the same uh, letters. Higuiim, which is meditative learning in the plural, becomes Hagoyim, the peoples. They are one and the same. So as we learn, we give birth to the Gentiles. The Hebrew word for intention is kavana. 
if we add it, make it a plural, it becomes kavanot. Those are the same exact letters in the word tchunot, which means attributes. So our intentions as Jews become the attributes of the Gentiles, of Hagoyim. The Gentiles are the embodiment of our thoughts, intentions, and feelings at the time that we are learning, that is incubating them. When a Jew learns Torah, it is a Jew's thoughts, feelings, intentions that set the stars into motion and determine the physical properties and the interactions of the stars that will in turn give birth to everything on earth. All living beings, all inanimate beings, and their interactions. So our thoughts are setting the stars in motion. The Hebrew word for brain is moach, which is equal to 48, which is the value of the word kochav, which means stars. Machshevot are thoughts, which is shavut kochav. It is making the stars return on themselves. So we, when we learn, set the stars in motion. Now, I don't know of any pregnant woman who sits and meditates on negative attributes for her yet unborn child. When a woman imagines what the baby that she's going to give birth to is like, she imagines the child being beautiful, being healthy. She wishes every good thing for that child if she's a healthy mother. And that is precisely what we should be doing when we learn Torah. The correct learning of Torah involves us blessing the creation with every good thing. It is very important that we do not speak ill of the Gentiles, think ill of the Gentiles, even though now we have produced Gentiles with undesirable traits, we should not get into the loop of saying, well, that's just the way they are. We have to break out of that cycle and very intentionally imagine them in a very, very positive way and want the best for them. If we look at the older peoples in, in the world, the aboriginals, uh, the, the, the people in India, the people in the Far East, um, native peoples, they are not anti-Semitic. They may have picked up some anti-Semitic influences of late, but they are not endemically <coughs> anti-Semitic. The reason for that is they were brought into being by the earlier generations, the pre-Rabbinic generations of Israel, who had the right intentions when they learned Torah. Now you may say, well, that doesn't make sense. Those peoples are older than the Jews. They're, the Aboriginals have been around for longer than the Jews. How did the Jews bring them into being? When anything is brought into being, it is brought into being with its entire context. The Talmud says that the moon is created with age, which is correct, but everything is created with age. So if someone is born, they are born with a genealogy, they are born with a history, they are born 
actually is the result of infinite time. So when the Jews learn Torah correctly, we are above time, and that which we bring into being is created with its, with everything that engendered it physically and emotionally and so forth and so on. Time in Hebrew is Zman, 747, which is Mikwaot, which is the, the learning of the Torah, and it's also events that occur in, in the world. So when a Jew is learning Torah, we're sitting above the, the, the Torah reading it, we are above time, and we create beings in time. So there is no contradiction with us imagining ourselves younger than some of the peoples that we are creating. One of the mistakes, a major mistake, in people who learn what's called the Sfirot in the Kabbalah, the attributes, is attributing these attributes to God, thinking that these are God's attributes. God does not have attributes. To attribute anything to God is idol worship. The attributes, which are the spherot, and please God will go through them, at least perfunctorily, are divine attributes. They're godly attributes, but they are not God's attributes. What the spherot actually are are what we should be intending for the Gentiles when we learn. So now let's go through the Sfirot and we'll see how we should be understanding them and applying them and blessing the Gentiles with them correctly. The first and considered highest level of uh, the spherot, of, the, of the, they're called emanations, which is very interesting because M is mother and then nations. So this is the mother of the nations, these emanations, if we understand them correctly, is Keter. That's the highest. Keter is considered um, God's crown. It is not God's crown. It is that with which we are supposed to be crowning the Gentiles. It is the divine crown. We are supposed to be crowning the Gentiles with a divine crown so that they have a godly soul. That is the blessing of the Gentiles, having a godly soul, being crowned with holiness, and being able to connect with, with that which is creating Ein Sof, even though um, they're created beings. That is the crown. That is the Ketel. The next sphera is Chochmah, which is wisdom. We should be blessing and praying to Hashem that the Gentiles that are going to come into being as the result of our learning have chokhmah, have wisdom. And we should be praying that those who were not created with wisdom should acquire it. The next sphera is Bina, which is translated as understanding, and this is cor correct. Um, Bina can also be looked at as B, and then, which means within me, and the Na is Hakol, everything. Everything is within me. The Gentiles should be created with the conscious knowledge that everything is within them. The next sphera is chesed, which is translated as mercy. 
and also loving kindness. We should be intending for the Gentiles to have the attribute of mercy and loving kindness. Dean, which is justice. We should be blessing the Gentiles with the desire for justice in a positive way, not not wreaking revenge. See, what is it? Wreaking, seeking <laughs> revenge, but being grounded in the fact that things are need to be just in the world. Dean is also um, the ability to to judge things correctly, not to to judge things judgmentally to, 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 to appreciate things correctly and apply the correct decisions to them. Tiferet is magnificence. Tiferet is magnificence. We should be blessing the Gentiles with magnificence. That they should have magnificent uh, should have magnificent bearing because they are wise and just and good. They should have that royal type of bearing that comes from um, possessing the right attributes. Netzach is both eternity and victory. And we should be blessing the Gentiles with being able to be victorious over themselves and over that which they encounter in the world, which are challenges to them, which are going to strengthen them. And it also means that we should be blessing them with immortality. Hod is glory. That's very close to Tiferet, magnificence. Hod, Hevav Dalid, is uh, the value of 15, which is the name Yah. And it is also Ba'ahava, which means love, with love. With love, yes. So they should be glorious in their love. They should be crowned with the glory of, of, of love. Yisod uh, is foundation. We see a lot of Gentiles don't have a, a firm foundation on which to stand. Um, not a firm social foundation, not a firm f familial foundation, not a firm moral foundation and now we are seeing that quite literally the ground is 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 opening up from under them too that derives from not being on solid moral ground and so when we are learning torah we jews should be saying may it be god's will that the gentiles that come into the world come into the world with a solid moral foundation, solid family foundation, solid societal foundation, so that they know who they are, so that they have solid ground to walk on. And then there's the Hashchina. The Shechina is God's presence in the world. We should be wishing for the Gentiles that they are God's presence in the world, that they are the embodiment of God's will in the world. It should be the Jews' greatest joy to see happy, healthy, productive, moral, magnificent Gentiles. It should give us genuine joy in the same exact way that we derive 
satisfaction and nachat when we see our children, our physical fam familial children, walking as they should in the world, learning, progressing, being productive, being godly, being pure, being good. We must understand that the Gentiles who are the children of our learning are, the, are also our children. And we should want for the Gentiles everything that we want for our physical children. Yes. And a Jew sh should see Gentiles doing beautiful things and cry with joy. That should be your highest satisfaction and joy in the world is knowing that you've created a world in which the people that are born into it can, can express the, 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 you have the highest level of soul expression and physical expression and they should have beautiful things inside them to express. This is the truth about um, the Sfirot and if we do this, I promise you, there will be no anti-Semitism in the world. Thank you for listening.